What's going on, guys? It's Nathan the Barter here with Lambo Media, joined by another very special guest, Alec Marsh of the Kansas City Royals organization. Thank you for joining, Alec. How you doing, my man? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Of course, not too bad. Just hanging in there. So, start off. How, how are you staying consistent with your work ethic through this disastrous COVID-19 situation, and how are you getting your work in? Yeah, it's pretty tough. I feel like I'm pretty. Um, you know, I got lucky because i'm i got to stay with my my girlfriend and her parents and they live in california so it was about five hour drive from arizona and they have like a in-home weight room set that i get to use so i get to at least use some weights throw some of that stuff around and i got a buddy that lives right down the road too we've been throwing together and we've been using a indoor facility to throw our bullpens and stuff so um i'm extremely lucky i feel like i'm gonna be ready to go whenever it comes back up but I know some of my buddies that like were in New York, for instance, and they couldn't do anything. They were squatting, you know, Dasani 24 water bottle packs because that's all they, that's all they had. So um, everyone's in a different situation. So I think it's going to be uh, interesting once everyone gets back because everyone's going to need you know a different amount of time. Right. So are are you are you mainly getting your work in solo, or are you getting your work in with multiple guys, or just just your buddy? Yeah, it's just me and my buddy throwing wise um, on lift days and running. Everything else is kind of solo. I mean, maybe I drag my girlfriend to come lift with me, but um, she plays softball at Arizona State, so she's kind of her season's over. So she's not really doing as much as I am, be just because I, I still have a season, or I at least hope that there's still going to be a season. So I'm just training, getting ready for that, getting ready for it to come back. But um, it's been pretty boring, man, like lifting by yourself and everything. You know, I definitely miss being around the guys and doing that. So you said your girlfriend plays at Arizona State. You also play to Arizona State. Do you guys like give each other you guys give each other tips or <laughs> No, I think we give each other more crap than anything just yeah. because yeah, we're both really competitive and she's talented and she's uh she's a couple years younger than me, so she's still in college and She's having fun, but no, she's very supportive, and it's pretty cool to have someone who understands your schedule as right. much as she does just because she's busy. You know, she's going through the same schedule I did when I was in college and the travel and all that stuff and getting schoolwork done. So it makes it a lot easier when you have someone that knows what's going on. Right. So what was the draft process like coming out of Arizona State? It was awesome, man. I mean, that's kind of the big reason why I went there was because I knew um, that's I mean, that's a huge hub for baseball. Right. Spring training is down there in, in uh, Tempe, Arizona. So I was like, oh, I want to if I want to play pro, I feel like I should go somewhere where I'm going to be seen the most. And the scouts are down there in Arizona State. gets like 20 scouts of practice. Like, you know, they're always down there. So um, that was awesome. And my junior year was pretty hectic. I mean, I talked to every club. There was an MLB. We were having meetings for four or five hours a day, just saying the same stuff over and over again to these these scouts. And then we're filling out questionnaires, and it, it got pretty tedious at times. But it was amazing. Um, once the draft actually happened there in June, it was pretty exciting. So how is that? How is that transition from ASU to minor league baseball? Um, I thought it was pretty easy just because I love baseball so much. It didn't really matter, um, you know, where I was going or how long the season is or whatever it was. Um, I just wanted to get back out there and play and I wanted to start in my pro career. So I think it was really fun um, going from college. And then we had, you know, our, our, our down slope the second half of the season in college. And then I got to go to pro ball and then in the fall and we ended up winning a championship. So I got my first ring in professional baseball with the Idaho Falls Chuckers um, in the Pioneer League, which was was a blessing that, you know, college didn't work out as well as we wanted it to, but then we went straight into a championship team in the Pioneer League, which was awesome. Yeah, congr congrats on that championship. And um, what, what has been the biggest difference you've noticed uh, from D1 baseball compared to pro baseball? Um, a lot more free swingers. I think it depends – D1 baseball is such a, a broad thing, right? Because you got so many different conferences, and some conferences are better than others. And I think being in the Pac-12, um, you got a lot of hitters that are so disciplined, and they're playing small ball, and they're trying to run your pitch counts up. And then you go to pro ball, and you got guys that you're playing against a lot of foreign players that, you know, it's their first year in the states. 
they're a little nervous. They're, you know, they're trying to compete and perform as well on top of that. And um, some of them, you know, everyone's fighting for a job. So some guys are swinging for the fences. And, you know, I thought it was a lot easier in the Pioneer League just because I got a lot of swings and misses on stuff that I wouldn't get swings and misses in the Pac-12 because in the Pac-12, those guys had a set routine. They had a set um, plan on how they were attacking the hitters, and that's what the coaches would do. They would go through – you know how what they wanted their hitters to do against a certain pitcher. You know, so there was a lot of a lot of fielding your position in the Pac-12 and a lot of bunting and a lot of following balls off and stuff like that. So it was probably more tiring. Um, so I think once I get to the single A and double A, that I'm going to start seeing a big jump just in maturity of hitters. So I think that's the difference between the Pac-12 at least and pro baseball. That's definitely understandable. And you got you got a slight taste of spring training. What has that experience been like thus far? It was really exciting until it got shut down, man. That was um, something we prepared for all fall and then all beginning of you know January and February. I went down to spring training like a month and a half early because I, I lived in Arizona pretty much for the last four years because of college. So I went down there early on and um, was just getting working, getting ready for spring training. And then my whole entire draft class for the Kansas City Royals went to – kansas city for a whole week and we spent time with each other and we had all these meetings about you know what to expect for spring training and how you should prepare for spring training and all this stuff and then you know to get there just i think it was i had one more day till we were going to go into our first game our first live game and then covid hit and everything got shut down so that was really tough um just because we were so excited and i mean i was doing better than I ever have was feeling better than I ever was um so now I mean it was it's a huge momentum shift and it's you know plays with your head a little bit but everyone's going through it man and it's really um it's really easy to get lazy and start eating like crap when you're in the house all day long you want to just make frozen pizzas and whatnot but um no stand top on top of that stuff and getting your training in kind of just keeping your your head in the goal and you know, it'll work out in the end. This stuff will pass by eventually. It's not going to be like this forever. So. Yeah, that's really unfortunate how how the 19 stuff ha- has hit, and you guys have been working out all fall, and no. and, and now it's now it's possibly getting postponed. So uh, obviously the season is on pause. Uh, what were you? What were your biggest goals for the season? I'd say my biggest goal. If, I don't know if I was reaching too far for it, but I wanted to end up in double A by the end of the year. Um, that was a big goal for me. And I honestly was leaning on even starting in high a and skipping low A completely to start it off just because of, you know, how well I was progressing. And I think some of the coaches were really like in the way that everything was going. So I thought it was definitely a possibility that I could even skip a level and just be, you know, high to double A, that was just, that's just one more jump. So, you know, even if I had a good start to the year in, in high, who knows, I could have ended up in double A. So, um, I don't know, man, that was, that was one big goal. And I think another goal was to hit a hundred miles an hour. And I mean, I've always had a ton of goals. So I wanted, I wanted to do that just because my strength was up, body weight was up and I was doing really good in that aspect of everything, feeling good. But I think just staying on top of my mobility and, and mental, like mentality and stuff, um, keeping, you know, I started journaling last fall, which helped out my career a ton. Um, and just, you know, having a routine and taking it day by day and not looking too far ahead. And another big goal was to not worry about what everyone else was doing. Cause it's easy to get caught up in what other players are doing, who's getting sent up, who's getting sent down. Um, I think that's the biggest lesson they tried to teach us right away was don't get, you know, don't put your, your shoes in someone else's you know, because you're just, I mean, you're trying to do your thing and you're trying to beat someone else out for a job and it does get competitive. But then again, you're just playing baseball. And if you just do, you know, everyone who's in professional baseball has a chance to make it to the major leagues. But a lot of guys don't make it just because they're they're too much worried about everybody else, you know. Right. So I thought that was, that was a big thing, too, was just staying laser focused, having that tunnel vision and worrying about myself taking it day by day and seeing what goes on. So as of now, are you focusing more on the mental side of the game or are you focusing more on your, the physical aspect of your game? I think right now, um, physicality wise, I'm just trying to maintain, um, what I had in spring training. So 
I'm doing, I mean, I'm still lifting three, four times a week. I'm still getting some cardio in, doing, making sure I'm doing some other stuff too, just getting outside, just not being inside all the time. Um, cause there are things you can do outside still. You just can't be going hanging out with people. Right. So in that aspect, I'm, I'm staying up with that and the mentality stuff. I think I'm just trying to create a routine, excuse me, for myself. So I don't stray from, you know, I'm not having like my sleep schedules exactly the same as what it was in spring training right now. Um, everything is kind of about the same. So I'm not surprised when we get back. Um, I'm still journaling and I'm still getting on top of that stuff. I think throwing wise, um, it, it might've tweaked it just a little bit. So I'm still throwing every day, but now I'm working on small things and I'm working on minute stuff. So I'm not worried about the big picture, you know, so one day it might be fastball change up the next day. It might be slider curveball, um, and working on, you know, shaping another pitch, a sinker, which I actually finally successfully did these last couple of weeks, but just controlling what you control, and that's about it. Right. So uh, you earned multiple awards while at Arizona State. And one was the All Pac-12 uh, first team. How has that benefited your draft selection, if it has at all? And how did that impact where you fell in the draft? Um, I thought everything impacted the draft that year, just because I think going into my junior year, I was probably floating around fifth fifth round type guy. Um, and then having that really good start to the season, I think jump started everything. You know, there was talks of first round. Some teams were interested in first round, and um, I fell off towards the end just a little bit. But just because I was throwing so much and I had a lot of pressure on me, and uh, which I loved, but it was, I mean, I, I, we were doing a lot just because the way our pen was set up. And um, I think draft wise, I went exactly where I was supposed to go. Um, and I mean, all those those honors and stuff, they they help for sure. But I think it's what you do leading up to that. You know, I think it's you know the work I put in that sophomore uh, off season, going into my you know junior fall and stuff like that, and you know pitching against Torkelson and and Bishop and those guys all fall and showing out there with a ton of scouts at practices and just keeping my headspace you know clear. Um, I thought that was good too. And I think the biggest advantage that I had that helped me out a ton was maturity in scout meetings and talking to these guys, maturity on the mound. You know, I was never a big guy that would freak out if something didn't go my way. I'd just try to fix it. You know, I was a big, big guy trying to fix things. Um, so yeah, I think that was, that's probably how it affected the draft mostly. You were talking a little bit about pressure earlier. Do you, do you tend to perform better under pressure or worse? 100% better. I think I don't like to get too comfortable because when I get comfortable, I kind of get in this cruising mode instead of attack mode. Right. Um, when, when the pressure's on me, it's more like, all right, you're not going to win. Um, so I, I definitely like it. I kind of tend to think I'm better out of the bullpen and I, my stats might show in, you know, summer ball and stuff like that. But um, I love starting and I want to make a career out of starting. But I think it's good to know that I have a backup plan in the bullpen if it's ever needed. But um, yeah, for sure. So perfect game ranked you number two as for the right-handed pitchers coming out of high school in the state of Wisconsin. What differentiated you from the other pitchers in the state of Wisconsin? It's a tough question just because I thought it was, um, you know, having that number being number two, like, oh, I'm going to get drafted out of high school and whatnot, but it's really hard to get drafted out of high school, especially at a, I wasn't going to go out of high school if I didn't get any money just because I, I wanted that collegiate experience. But, um, man, I mean, there was a lot of really good pitchers in that class, and I think it was just the amount of work I put in, that's all I did my high school season. I didn't have a ton of other things on my mind. I didn't have a huge social life. I had a girlfriend, but, like, I had spent minimal time with her, mainly on the weekends. Um so I think it was just putting in the work. I mean, my school schedule, my senior year, even though I didn't pitch that much because um, I had a back injury, I took it as a blessing in disguise to go to college. But I wanted to be a third baseman really bad. I had a couple D1 offers, a couple full rides, actually, to be a third baseman and pitch. So I was like, oh, man, that would be sweet. And then all the scouts were like, you're not going to make your money playing third base. Put down the bat, uh, which was hard to hear, but. So I ended up taking a good scholarship to Arizona State. But, um, I mean, I think it's just 
just worth that work ethic and what you put into it is what you can get out of it. You know, right. I know a lot of guys that are very talented who don't put as much work in as I do. And they do the same things I do just because, you know, that's the way people are born and they can go begging, either complain about it and be like, Oh, why does he, why is he throwing a hundred and he doesn't even put as, you know, nearly as much work as that. Cause it's not about that. You know, it's about what you can do, what you're good at right. and uh, you know, taking your career the way you want to do it and molding it the way you want to. So, so has the back injury impacted your career as of now and after that injury happened and rehab happened? Um, not once. No, it was kind of a freak thing. I went to uh, physical therapy for it. We never got any like x-rays or MRIs really on it or anything. Um, I just had a pinched nerve in my back, so I couldn't really lift my arm. Um, I did three months of rehab and it was, you know, I think it took – there's something with nerves where it takes like a year for an inch of it to grow back and to be healthy. So I was still throwing towards the end of that. And, um, I, once I got to college, it was still kind of bothering me a little bit. And like, I couldn't throw as far as I normally could, but I could throw short distances and have the same velocity. And that's kind of why I strayed all, I like strayed away from long tossing just because I couldn't do it anymore. And then one day I just tried long tossing again and it was completely fine. It just went away. And I think that's, that was about a year mark after the injury happened. And I was like, well, there you go. Just, it healed itself. So, um, never had any issues with it since. Which is good, thank God. Good. So not only did you have a plus plus arm in high school, but you were also in the 74th percentile for your 60 yard dash time. Has your at? Do you think the your athleticism has impacted your ability to pitch? 100%, dude. I'm. I mean, I think it's it's very useful. Just to you know, I like to you know, people say, oh, you're a pitcher, and you're a pitcher. Pitchers aren't athletes. Uh, I like to beg to differ, just because I think me playing third base, playing the infield, and hitting a lot helped out too. And I played a ton of other sports in my lifetime. Never played any other ones in high school, but prior to high school, I played almost every sport. Um, and I think the reason I didn't play any high school is because I was so focused on baseball. I didn't want to get hurt for baseball. Um, but no, man, it's huge. I think it takes, you know, an athlete to get off that mountain and get some of those bunts and make plays. And um, I think it's extremely useful. All right. So that concludes up all my questions. Uh, I thank you for joining. Um, it's a hard time. And I wish you I wish you that you stay safe and healthy throughout this tough time that COVID-19 has given us and your family and friends and loved ones stay safe as well. I thank you for joining. Yeah, thanks, man. If you need anything, let me know, and I appreciate it. Keep doing good. For sure. Thank you. Mm-hmm.